Kelly Banor Brown, and today we're going to be talking on narcissistic relationships about a very sad, really, question that comes up repeatedly with the clients I've worked with over the last 30 years who have had family members, friends, uh, lovers, mates, and coworkers who are narcissistic. Of course, as I've described to you before, if you've watched my other videos, and I hope that you have subscribed, and if you haven't, please consider doing so. The name of the channel is Beverly Banoff Brown MS. And there are many other subjects besides narcissistic relationships. Some of them are about joyful marriage, authentic dating, successful dating, mindful parenting, parenting with heart, holistic wellness, inner peace now, radical gratitude, and about vanishing twin syndrome. And I think I may be leaving a few others out. And actually I'm preparing right now the number of new topics that I'll be uploading hopefully soon to YouTube. Anyway, it is a very painful thing when you've had something major happen in your life and the person who you are hoping will be able to really hear you and grasp what you're going through and give you compassionate uh, responses or create a safe kind of energetic container for you to share and it doesn't happen. And this goes on very frequently in families, in love relationships, etc., with people who have these issues because they are so self-absorbed because you're asking of them to handle what is often a shocking situation, maybe some bad news, maybe an emergency where there's an urgent need for their being uh, fully present. Sometimes they can rise to the occasion and sometimes it's too much for them. Now, why is that and how does it affect your life and your family's life, potentially. What I'm going to share with you is based on the work I've done, based on my own life experience uh, with people over quite a few years of being on this earth now, <laughs> even though I feel like I'm 22 inside most of the time. But it really is not scientific, and I want to make that clear. Okay, so you can take this or leave it, and I think it may just help you. Most people have had traumas of one sort or another in their lives, and many of them have gotten healed from them and have moved on. They've had PTSD responses to traumatic events, and they've dealt with it. They've had all kinds of things that have influenced their cellular memory, and they may have some phobias and some other neurotic issues come up. We all are fairly complicated, and we all have our quirks and our foibles. And really, in some cases, that's part of what makes us more lovable and more unusual, what makes us really us and unique. With people who have lived through whatever it was that made them fairly far along or very far along on the narcissistic spectrum of behaviors, it usually happened very early in childhood. So think of a child, a baby, a toddler just learning to walk, still eating baby food. And maybe they've had a parent who was an active alcoholic who'd come home drunk. This is just one scenario. And who was abusive to the child. Maybe the child cried late at night and the father or mother had to get up early in the morning. And instead of saying, okay, let me hug this baby, let me cradle this child, sing a lullaby to this little angel, this precious gift from God that I've been entrusted with. Maybe they had family situations where they were taught, you don't do that. You give them, you give them a tough approach, you slap them until they get the idea that it's not okay to cry. Or you uh, shake them by the shoulders until they've seen you have such a tantrum that they're just quieted into submission. This happens, unfortunately, 
way too often. Even one time anywhere on this planet would be too often. And we all know there is domestic violence. There is child abuse. It is a reality. And I dream of the day and imagine a world where that is no longer the case. But most of the people I've worked with who have these narcissistic leanings have had that kind or similar experiences. So what happens? The message that they've gotten, the bond of safety and security that never formed in attaching healthily and securely to their primary caregiver or caregivers had them kind of freeze in a sense at that age. So let's say that was a toddler, that's a two or three year old little child. Think of the two year old or three year old children you've ever seen. How equipped are they if you come to them and you say, I just, I just heard a terrible diagnosis about my father or I've just lost my job or I just had a terrible accident in the car and it's amazing that I'm able to walk. How is a toddler going to respond? A toddler will not be able to give you anything much in the way of empathy because they are frozen at that level of consciousness and emotional immaturity when it comes to exactly when you need them most. Now there is no excuse for abuse, so please don't hear me as apologizing for this kind of behavior. You deserve somebody in your life who you can count on reliably, who you can trust with any information you want to share. You deserve to be loved and be able to love in a healthy way. It's your birthright and you should claim it. And at the same time, I think it's really important to understand that in most cases, the narcissist is not trying to be mean or sadistic. And in some cases, there are people who are mean and malicious about it. But when they say to you, for example, I don't want to hear about it, or I'm tired, I'm going to rest, I've got a headache, don't bother me, I can't cope with this right now. Or who cares? Or just stiff upper lip it, get over it, get on with it, don't bother me. Very often, it's a cover for their fear, which underlies it all, that they're inadequate. The message they got when they were kids was you don't matter, or you're not enough, or you're no, no good. And so they don't feel underneath it that they have the ego strength to bring you very much support. And so a lot of times I think it comes out as rejecting you. It's painful, it's hard, they're self-absorbed for a reason, because they don't have usually a whole lot of inner resources to turn to because of these early traumas, and we can only give what we have. So, can this be healed? Yes. Does it require professional assistance and guidance? I believe in most cases, it truly does. Should you wait for them? Should you be patient with them? Should you take more responsibility perhaps for your own happiness? Look outside of their uh, purview for the support and encouragement and empathy that you want and have a right to? Absolutely yes. I'm just saying we need to have compassion not only for you but also for everybody involved because somewhere along the line the chain needs to be stopped of all these emotional woundings so that the world can finally be a place where love prevails all the time, not just some of the time. I'm Beverly Banner Brown. Please leave me a like if you've enjoyed any part of this. Even if you disagree with me, it's, it's a sharing from my heart to yours, and I do hope it is of service to you. Until next time, I wish you love, I wish you empathy, <laughs> and please know you're in my loving prayers, wherever you are and whatever you're going through. Bye for now.